any other questions? Sounds good. Okay. Sorry, I threw him back out, so I'll be rather quick on here. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to read this real quick. We read it at the last uh, Senate meeting, no, not all these pages. Um, but um, this is from Tim Brock. He's the former GSC president and Supreme Court, Supreme Court Chief Justice uh, from 2008-2009. And one of the things he states in there is that – he sent us the letter basically saying that Section 6.4.1 of the uh, Constitution states, the Supreme Court shall draft rules for the general elections – as set forth in the SJ bylaw subject to Senate approval. The language used here, which he was a principal author, was chosen for a specific reason. The Supreme Court does not own the election rules. Uh, the election rules are a piece of Senate legislation and thus rightfully owned by the Senate. This ownership is important because it means that the court cannot arbitrarily <coughs> and summarily change the rules. The court is bound to the rules passed by the Senate. And so the reason I state that is, is simply because of this. The reason why, part of the reason why we're here too and why I should ask you maybe to consider <coughs> Just consider thoughtfully this: is that they changed the? I mean, you know, it's a minor thing. They did change the debate. They moved the timetable up ahead of time. In previous years, we also had our elections in the timetable, especially for the runoffs, specifically enumerated. The runoffs will start on this day. They will stop on this day, et cetera, et cetera. And that wasn't provided this year. So those are a couple of other points we're heading off to uh, that we wanted to remind you of. But the main thing is that now two elections, we have the same constituency group not being able to vote. And yes, I, and the other thing is, I do want to state that yeah, it's not likely, truth be told, that I'll probably make it through the runoff if Kent, to the runoff if Kent school students were able to vote in the first election. But think about this too. If you take 96 and, and, and divide it, if you take all the numbers and divide it out, the second time around, the difference in votes was only five students. So the potential pool of students, when you work out the numbers, it'd been the same thing as if here two weeks ago I was complaining uh, that you know it's with a 44 vote difference that there were 850 students that couldn't vote. If you work out the numbers proportionally, that's the same thing because of the ratio. The ratio of students in the second election that couldn't vote to the difference of votes is almost 19 to 1, whereas in the previous it was much lower than that. So that's why we all we really want to do here is just give the kids students the ability to vote online in the U -Link, uh, on Ulink the same way that everybody else did. And then if the results change, then go from there and handle it. And according to the Constitution, we have until the last Senate meeting of the year to get it all squared away and settled out on this. So if we want to take action, we have the ability to do it. And the most important thing is that every year when we hear people talk about apathy, when we hear people talk about, you know, people don't care, and the SGA does not care. Well, this is our chance to say, okay, there was an injustice. And maybe it won't make that big of a difference, but by golly, we're at least going to give these people their chance to vote, just like everybody else would. And hopefully next year, for the next year, we won't have to go through all this mess again because we'll clearly define uh, better ways to do it. So, are there any questions for me? Yeah. Um, do you know if any of the Kent School students actually did vote during the presidential elections, either the actual ones or the runoffs? For uh, yeah, some of them did cast their vote. Yes. So the, the people who actually did want to vote, even though it may not have been on you, Link, at least voted. Is that right? Not just entirely. That's not entirely true, no. Uh, there's two points. One, we've had email communications, and especially for the first election, we have documented evidence where students, even on the very last day, uh, toward the very end, did not know that they couldn't vote in the elections. So, yes, some did uh, because they got the email. But others, if you didn't get the email, you didn't know. Especially the second time around was the same problem. What, what are you supposed to do is the thing. But also, too, the point we're also making is that when you send in that email vote, you can subpoena that and request it because it's on the Louisville.edu domain, and that's not constitutional because it doesn't protect the privacy thing. Council. Um, our first question is, did they, did they really not get the Well, it's over there, but I have several screenshots that were time stamped people saying that I couldn't vote, I couldn't vote, why couldn't I vote, and, and didn't know. And it was that night that I received an email from, or a text message from Kate wanting to why students couldn't vote. And we didn't, you know, we didn't start this or find out about it until the next day, uh, which had been Friday that the original results were announced. I mean, I understand that too, but I was like, I can't. I mean, some students did. I haven't gotten any of the emails. I don't, I, there's some centers in here who have not gotten any emails. There's some centers who've gotten all the emails. So that's the other thing that's. 
you know, we don't know. I mean, that, that's the sad truth is that we don't know. And there have been several emails sent out from UNL IT that state that there are problems in email due to the migration. Right. And one of them was sent out uh, the middle, like the middle of the three-day elections today. Okay. I didn't, uh, they sent out the email, just to answer your question, to, to the entire school, not just the Kent school, saying that some people can't vote if you have trouble emailing us. Uh, but that's the big issue. I never got, I mean, I voted on you for that trouble, but I never got an email saying, hey, if you can't vote, email us. Jared didn't either. I talked to a lot of medical school people. They never got any emails. Uh, I'm not sure what the trouble with the email is, but the fact is some students couldn't vote, and some of the ones that couldn't vote didn't even get an email saying how they could vote. So constitution aside, whether or not that was a good way of voting, they didn't know. Um, last week we did, or two weeks ago, we didn't get the opportunity to hear from Kent School, so I'd really like to hear your opinion and your take on it, because it's, it's your school and quite frankly you don't have anything to gain from the decision making. Um, well, <coughs> the way that I think about it is that um, I was concerned that several students wanted to vote and they were not given the opportunity. Um, I feel like they should have the opportunity if they still want it. Um, I, I don't think it's right to exclude, you know, 100 students from an election. Um, however, you know, I, I do think that there's so many issues involved in terms of, you know, email. Did they get it? Did they not? Or did they just not understand that it's kind of a nebulous issue? Um, but reading over the previous Senate minutes, I think that what seems to be the fairest thing is to um, perhaps have an election just for Kent students, for undergrad Kent students, because as a master's student, I was able to vote. And, I, and from what I understand, no master's students have problems. But every undergrad that I've talked to has not been able to vote. And I think that that's a large proportion of the student body um, to be excluded from that. And I also feel like, um, and I, I really apologize for not being here at the last meeting, but I also feel like um, we really need to be careful about how we handle this and how this looks to other students, because not a lot of students have the highest opinion of SGA. And I, I feel like if this is the way, you know, I don't know, I just feel like if we don't handle this well, we're gonna continue to, to tarnish our repu reputation instead of um, you know building it up and having higher students to eyes. So I think that we need to be really careful about how we handle this because um, you know if a whole school is left out of an election process, what investment are they going to have in student government? So that's what I think about it. Um, I just wanted to say what Kate said is I think when we're thinking about this, we're thinking a lot about like what how it might affect three individual candidates. And what, or those hundred students that didn't get the chance to vote. But we should also really think about just the student body, the 22,000 student body in general, and just kind of see like, what are they gonna think of? Like, already when they had a runoff election, students don't understand the whole 40% rule concept that they have to go through. I had so many students asking me, why, why, was it that close? Second time around, someone wins by five votes. They're like, I thought it was 40%. Like, students think SGA is confusing, weird, stupid, period. So when we do stuff like this, if we don't have a plan of action of telling them exactly what we're doing, how we're doing, how we're doing it, or like how it's going to affect them, it's just I think on the greater student body version, like it's just not going to go over well. And I think you make very very good points, but. You're taking it from the perspective of how will the greater student body feel if we confuse them. I'm looking at it from the standpoint of how will the greater student body feel if we disenfranchise an entire school or a university. And I'm, call me an idealist or a softie or whatever, but I like to think that people will be more upset by disenfranchisement than a little bit of confusion. That's just me, though. Charles, did you have anything to say? Paul basically um, answered my question. Okay, so we're going back here. Yeah, I think because we've been talking about all the logistical issues, who got the email, who did it, who was able to figure out how to vote, whether or not it was constitutional, constitutional, which it clearly wasn't, since it wasn't anonymous. I think that we don't want to be a Senate that goes on record as saying we're okay with with approving the election results of a of an election that was unconstitutional. Um, so just piggybacking off of what Kate said and what Pooja had to say. 
I think that we should put all of those, well, we can you know, parse them through the details of like how uh, this problem came to fruition. I think that we should put that aside and realize that principally the problem is that the election is not conducted the way it should have been. We should recognize that and we should give the students the opportunity to vote. Mike. Okay. Though I wasn't here at the last meeting either, and I apologize for that. But the big issue that I've had with this is that if this was say that I'm just going to pick the largest school, arts and sciences undergrads were not able to vote in the election for in the elections, that would obviously be a huge ordeal, and that's because of the and that would be because of the size of arts and sciences. Uh, but however, when you start looking at it, where is where's the number at? What number of disenfranchised students? Is it, where, where's the line drawn where, okay, well, this is too many, but it's okay if we disenfranchise this many. And so when we lost an entire, an entire demographic, the Kent School undergrads, uh, I, I wouldn't have cared if there were 50 students. I would still be fighting to allow them to get their votes cast because I personally, I don't know where there is a number where we can say it's okay that we disenfranchise this many students, but it's not okay that we disenfranchised this many. And I mean, that's just, that's my opinion on this. I think it's black and white. You, we either, we either did disenfranchise someone or we didn't. In this case, we did. I believe parliamentary inquiry. Yeah. Um, we have moved and seconded the question, and I don't know if that has a discussion. I don't think it is. I'm trying to find it on my list. Move the. I don't see it. I believe it's not. I'm pretty sure. Discussion. No more debate, no more discussion. Are there any abstentions? All right. The ayes have it. We're now voting on this. Is there any? Just, we don't discuss. That's what we just did. I'm sorry. All those in favor of voting on this here? Voting, uh, voting, yeah, voting to approve it. As voting as to approve what is on the screen right now. No. Voting to vote on it. 
Yeah. No, no, we are not. No, we're just, we just do that. Okay. So we cleared it up. Yeah. What we're doing right now, we just voted to vote. So we're not going to talk about this anymore. We're going to vote on this. That's what we're doing. Can we talk about it for a second? Are we voting on the whole thing?